Hello, welcome to lesson nine of Mastering Java. Here we're going to talk about the continue statement, uh, which is very similar to the break statement that we've already discussed. Um, but before I actually talk about that, I'm in, I want to introduce something else in this lesson called the remainder operator. Um, and the reason I'm doing that here is because it's easy to describe the continue statement once I've described this other operator to you. It's very simple. So before we've talked about in Java, you can add things together with a plus sign, obviously. You can subtract things with a minus sign. You can multiply things with an asterisk, and you can divide numbers with a division symbol. There's another operator that's not as common. That's why I didn't cover it so, so much, and that's the percent sign. Now, when I'm talking about this percent sign in terms of the remainder operator, it, it has nothing to do with percentages. They just chose the percent symbol to represent this, but just forget about it having to do anything with a percentage. And I think the easiest way to describe it is by is with a quick statement. So let me go system.out.println. Um, this percent operator gives you the remainder. Remember back from math class when you when you take four and divided by uh, divide by two. What is the answer going to be? When you, if you take 4 and divide by 2, you're going to get 2. And because it goes in a perfect number of times, the remainder is 0. All right? So obviously if we just do this, you know, we'll get the answer of 2. But if we replace this division symbol with this percent symbol, it has nothing to do with percentages. What it's going to do is take 4 and divide by 2. But it's only going to give you what's left over. It's called the remainder operator. It tells you how much is left over. So since 4 divided by 2 is a perfect 2 with a remainder of 0, we should expect to get a 0, and that's what we get. If you take, for instance, 10 and, uh, and do a percent with a 10 there, it's going to take 10 divided by 10. That goes a perfect number of times with a remainder of 0, and so again we get 0. But if we put a 9 here, 10 divided by 9, it goes one time, and the remainder, what's left over after you do this division, is 1. Because, you know, you have 10 pencils, and then you have 9 pencils. How many times can you divide in there? You only have one, you have one extra pencil left over, and so the remainder is a 1 there. So this comes straight out of math class. If you're taking 10 divided by 6, the remainder is going to be a 4. All right, the re reason I'm showing you this is because a lot of times in Java, you'll do uh, comparisons to try to figure out what an even number is, what an odd number is. Um, and, and one of the easy ways to do that is just to check the remainder. So just kind of keep that in mind. We're going to use that in a minute. This little percent, when you see between two numbers or between a variable and a number, it's just telling you what the remainder is that's left over after you do the division. All right, now keep that in the back of your mind. Now we want to switch gears to the continue statement. Remember before we said the break statement. When you have a for loop, the break statement breaks you out of the loop and the program continues the flow. Let me just sort of remind you of that here in just a second. Let's do a integer i and let's write a quick for loop for i uh, is equal to 1, i uh, is less than or equal to, let's call it 30. And whoops, I have a little typo here, so we don't want a one there, we want an i. And then we'll say i plus plus, like this. All right, so here's my for loop. You can see I've got my curly braces here. Everything inside of these curly braces will execute whenever we run the for loop. And we're going to go from i is equal to 1 up to 30, uh, and then we'll increment. Now, we've done in the past couple of lessons, you know, uh, if I have some condition here, you know, uh, if i is equal to 5, if I put a break statement here, then whenever that condition is met, the break statement is going to just jump out of the loop completely and program execution will continue after the loop. So it's like a it's like a truncation of the loop is what a break statement is. A continue statement is sort of kind of the same thing, but if you see a continue statement inside of the loop, then what happens is the loop stops executing for that one time and it jumps back up to the top of the loop and continues on. So in other words, everything after the continue statement, all the statements that are down here, they kind of get skipped, but only for that particular pass through the loop. So if I get, if I'm running through here and I hit a continue statement, then I immediately, I don't break out of the loop, I continue back up to the top of the loop, and then I continue running the loop again uh, as normal. And if I hit the continue statement again, then I break out back up to the top of the loop. So essentially a continue statement is a way to skip everything inside the loop after that statement just for that one pass. So for instance, I know it's kind of hard to visualize that without an example. Let's look at the following. Let's say 
that I'm going to print system.out.println, something like this. And inside here, I'm just going to put i. So I'm just printing out the loop variable from 1 to 30. So let me go ahead and print that. As you can see what the output is, 1 all the way up to 30 because we're just looping here and I'm just printing this guy out. Now, what if I want to change what's printed out to the screen in a certain condition? So let's say, for instance, I really, I really love multiples of 5. So let's say when I get to a multiple of 5, such as 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, if I get to a multiple of 5, I print something different on the screen. Okay, um, If I just do it like this, it, the way that you would think you would do it is you'd say if i um, is what well you could do equal to 5, for instance. Let's, let's do it like this. If i is equal to 5, then you could do system.out.print ln. Then you could say i like uh, multiples of 5. Right, so what's going to happen is every time we go through there, it's going to check and see if i is equal to 5. If so, it'll print this, but all of this stuff at the end is still going to keep going and printing out uh, because of the way we have our loop set up. And you can kind of see that 1, 2, 3, 4, and then when we get to number 5, we hit the if statement. So this prints out, and then we continue printing. Of course, this statement is still inside of the uh, for loop. Is the 4 goes from this bracket to this bracket. So then we have 5, 6, 7 all the way uh, down there. What if we wanted to print a statement like this that worked for uh, uh, for all possible multiples of 5? Not just the number 5, but 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we can have a bunch of if statements in here, but an easier way to do that is the following. We can do i percent 5 equals 0. Make sure you understand that. What this is telling you, this is the remainder operator. We take the active loop index, whatever it is, we divide it by 5, and if the remainder is 0, that means this must be a multiple of 5. And so this if should trigger when i is 5, i is 10, i is 15, i is 20, because in all of those cases, the remainder should be 0. All right, so if we go and run this guy, we can kind of see something slightly different. We have one here, we have one here, and we have one here. We're printing out the statement right before uh, this guy right here. So this is getting closer to what I'm trying to do, but the, the problem is, is you know what I really want to do is I want to print out um, I want to print out the numbers, but I want to have a, a nice funny thing here uh, only in the cases whenever it's a multiple of five. If I wanted to change it up a little bit, I could just put the i here and then a plus and a space bar so that you'll see what I'm trying to do here as I run through the loop. You can see now the way I have it here is one two three four five. I like multiples of fives. Now, unfortunately, I have a duplicate here, but then I have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I like multiples of 5. So you see, every time I get to a multiple of 5, I'm printing my nice, cute statement. Now, everything is perfect here, except that I have a 20, and then I have a duplicate 20. I have a 15, and I have a duplicate 15. The reason that's happening is because when I trigger into a multiple of 5, I'm printing out uh, the number, and then, again, it's falling through the if, and I'm printing it out again. That's why I get that duplication there. Here's where I'm going to use the continue statement. All right. After I print this out, I'm going to use the word continue. Right. Remember, if it were a break statement, I would break completely out of the for loop and I would be done. But whenever you hit a continue statement, it just jumps back up to the top of the loop and goes down. The loop continues to execute normally, but every time I hit a continue statement, it bypasses the remainder of the loop, which is basically this print statement, and it jumps back up to the top and continues again and again. So let me go ahead and run it this time. Now you can see what I was trying to get at the whole time. I'm printing out the numbers 1 to 30, but every time I get to a multiple of 5, I have a special line that's printed. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I like multiples of 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I like multiples of 5. And so on. And the reason that's happening is because I'm looping through. I'm checking the remainder. When the remainder is 0, I'm printing out my special line with, you know, with the active uh, loop index there. But then I'm hitting a continue statement, which causes the rest of the loop on that one pass only to be bypassed. We go back and we continue. That's why it's called a continue statement rather than a break statement. Every time I get to, when I get to the next multiple of five, the same thing happens again. That's why I'm skipping over this duplicate print statement like that. Now, when would you use this in real life? It's, it's hard to say. There are some times whenever you're looping and you just want to bypass the remainder of a loop in certain conditions. 
This is an example of that. Um, as far as practical, let me give you concrete examples of when you would use that. It's hard to do. I just try to give you some examples. I've got an example uh, that you can work off in the exercises where you can kind of see when you might use something kind of like a continue statement. They're not used as much as other, uh, other parts of Java programming, but it's something that you're going to see in code and I want you to understand uh, basically how they work. So the bottom line is the break statement inside of a loop pushes you out of the loop and then the loop is over. The continue statement just jumps you back to the top of the loop and then you continue with the loop execution. Basically it allows you to bypass the remainder of the loop through that one pass only. 